Hello and welcome. We're here today to discuss the idea of worldview, whether you take a scientific worldview or a philosophical worldview or a psychological worldview. Um, all these things amount to what I would call sorcery, as the Bible calls sorcery. If you do not place them, if you place them in the highest center, the highest throne in your mind, then they become sorcery. You become a magician. The greatest metaphysician, the greatest philosopher, if he does not put Theos, God, at the center of his psyche, at the center of his life, at the center of his imagination, what Lacan called the master signifier. The master signifier in Lacan is where the, the thing occupies the center or highest place in language. And whether it be the master signifier or the center or the highest throne, whatever you want to describe it as, if you put science or philosophy or metaphysics or psychology or any is any ism, any ideology in the highest centerpiece of your mind, in, in the center of your life, not just your psyche, not just your thoughts, but your practice, your lived out behaviors and rituals, if you do not put Christ, Jesus Christ, at the center, then what you have is sorcery. I think this is a uh, very very true and very correct when you discuss the bible says in different parts of revelation it says that the sorcerers the sorcerers will be left outside of the city right what are scientists except for a new type of sorcery it's like a cult it's like a, a sort of sect or an arcane sect or a grouping of philosophers or scientists and they worship science they worship technology and science and progress and knowledge it's no different than the gnostics the gnostics were the same way these heresies of the early church and the christian church you will find that commitment to metaphysics and science is fine. Mathematics, science, metaphysics, psychology, anything is fine if it is done in reverence and in a, through a Christian worldview and a Christian filter and a Christian integration, an integration of these modes of disciplines of thought and knowledge. If they're in, properly integrated underneath of Christ, Christ is at the highest reach of your psyche. Christ is at the highest reach of your thought horizon, at the center of your life, at the center of your behavior and practices. And not all of your practices, you still will live in sin. Not all your practices will be brought under the rubric of perfection. We're not perfected instantly by Christ. We're made, it's an image of, over time, it takes time, and you're conformed to the image of Christ. But if you do not have Christ at the highest center piece of your thought, your horizons, your practice, your behavior, a center of your life, the best way to say it is your life, or not just your worldview, but your life, behavior, practices, then you will be lost. And there's no peace or stability or truth if you don't have Christ at the center. I don't even think that people that are lost of Christ can love properly. I believe that people that are lost, they can love, but they can't love properly. They can't love as God intended it to be. God intended you to love him first and foremost, above parents, above siblings, above above your children. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and then love your neighbor as yourself. And this cannot be done unless Christ is integrated in the center of your life. And so we'll discuss worldview. There's a German word called Weltanschung, which means worldview. Um, it's it's Carl Jung describes it as like a, the idea of a conception of the world mixed with attitude towards the world. Conception, well, Tanshong in German roughly would be best translated by Carl Jung as attitude towards the world or attitude towards the concept of the world or concept of the world with an attitude towards the world. And I, I have found, I see, five, six years ago, I entered the philosophical discourse by reading six of the Zizek canon, the Slavo Zizek canon by Slovenian philosopher Slavo Zizek. And that Integrated that brought me into philosophy sh shortly a, a year after I converted to Christianity. But I kind of had an intellectual conversion to Christianity, and only in the past six, five, four, five months have I had a really heart changing of, of Christianity, where you can assent to Christianity, you can have intellectual consent and ass assent to Christianity, but if your heart is not also converted, if Christ is not alive in the heart, if the kingdom's not winning in the heart of your heart then you will still be lost. I had intellectual assent to Christianity, and it's only six years later after converting that I have a heart captured by the Word, and it has to be done with the Word of God. So when you're studying all these human wisdoms, I love, sec I love teachers, I love wisdoms, I love philosophy, I love science, 
I love all these things, but I think that they become sorcery when you place them in the highest peak you see. It's as simple as that, really. If, on the other hand, you have Christ and he and every every thought in your mind, every thought you you see the idolatry in your mind, you see the sin in your mind, you see the pride in your mind, the prideful teachings leanings in your mind. If you bring every thought into captivity to Christ, and then you in, have Christ at the center of your life and the center of your worldview, your world tanchang, your attitude, your world conception, you have Christianity at the center of your world conception and attitude towards the world. Then you can start to read Carl Jung. I love Carl Jung. Carl Jung is one of my favorite. I think he's one of the most brilliant men to ever live, to ever grace the earth. But if you don't integrate Lacan, Jung, Freud, Peterson, Zizek, if you don't put them underneath the Christian rubric, the Christian, bring them into captivity under Christianity, bring your thoughts into captivity under Christianity, you end up with sorcery. And I was deep into this. I was teaching philosophy without much reverence for Christ. I was teaching philosophy and, and believing that I had power in my language. And these people, they call and Zizek, they play, play language games and say, the master signifier doesn't have to be God, and God can't be the master signifier. They think they can play a language game and box God out. <laughs> it it's, it's makes no sense at all. It's really foolish once, he's on the, once you're on the other side of it. It's really foolish. You can see that you cannot box God out, that you cannot remove God from language, from culture, society, without a destabilization and an undermining of the truth and a slandering of the truth and an undermining of the truth and living in lies afterwards. To have stability, peace, and truth, you have to have Christ at the center of your life. And you must not be a magician, you must be a Christian. It's enough to be a Christian. And everybody who, and it's the easiest commitment in the world because all you have to do is believe on the, him who is risen. Him who has died and crucified and risen. You have to believe on Jesus Christ. And if you believe on Jesus Christ, then I think you are secure, safe, and stable, and truthful. Truly. So with this, I'll leave you in my peace. I'll give you just a short talk today. God bless you. Amen. Bye-bye.